This is the face of a man who's never had a girlfriend before at 23, and it's all because Min Chan was too busy playing Roblox and watching anime reclapping. But luckily for our boy, today seems like his luckiest day on earth, as he learns that his childhood friend got betrayed and cheated on by her now ex-boyfriend. So you know what she does? She instantly transforms herself into a basketball. Just so Min Chan can grab the rebound, but let's just say she will get real disappointed real soon. So let's go ahead and fast forward to the action anime part that everyone loves, because these two childhood friends end up at Min Chan's house, and the girl is already inching some watermelons beside our boy. Now I'm not no professional farmer, but when Min Chan turns red and his banana tree plantation starts to mature beside Xena, then I think things are about to level up more than Ryan Gosling in the Barbie movie. Anyways, while Glasses Girl is busy bawling her eyes out the entire time, her sussy instincts slowly take over as she keeps getting closer and closer like the slender man. Eventually, she stops being annoying so our soon-to-be Chad pats her on her head, exactly like Marin from My Dress Up Darling. And apparently that's the most Sigma male move you could ever do to a girl in anime, as the head pat causes Xena to start removing some armored chest plates she created herself. Also, big bonus to the author is Xena's glasses get removed, so that's a big plus for me, unless you guys prefer girls with glasses. Regardless, after removing the diamond-plated chest plate, Xena's personally grown super large kiwis are put on display for Min Chan, leaving him totally speechless. However, since our boy looks half French, his French instincts kick in causing him to target and lock on the kiwis in front of him as he practices one of the love languages he learned in class. Then within mere seconds, chaos ensued as someone is heard claiming that they are wet, but I don't see any signs of rain indoors. So clearly that means only one thing and the same thought has already popped into our main character's head, so things are about to hit overdrive. Unfortunately for our boy though, Xena makes a very disappointed face upon seeing the ultimate reveal of Min Chan's tornado, causing her to look like she's from the world of Konosuba. Now I can't really describe why Xena is super disappointed, but just read this blank white panel with some words up top and you guys will get the idea. At this point, I have no idea who'd feel bad for, and I bet our editor is absolutely laughing on the floor right now. Nevertheless, back on topic, our boy Min Chan is living up to his name as he's literally the Min's size for a banana tree, but bro has no clue as he's never gotten this far in his boss fights. As such, the turntables turn as Xena is the first one to chat up so she pushes Min Chan away and gets up totally in disbelief that such a thing could be real. At this point, our boy still has no idea what the heck is happening as he thought the good deed is finally being done. Plus, he's also about to do his signature quick shot skill, if you know what I mean. So now everything has quickly gone downhill in literally seconds, and the only person left on their knees is not Xena, but actually Min Chan as he's trying to piece things together one by one. After re-equipping all armor that Xena lost during battle, she puts on her glasses and looks back at our boy to answer his long-awaited question of why she's all of a sudden being a ding-dong Andy. It was then, at this point, reality has finally struck as Xena's hard-hitting truth pierces through our boy's broken heart, where Min Chan finally learns that size really does matter. Now with Min Chan attempting to process what just happened, he tries to do a discord mon clap back, but before he could say anything, his childhood friend is now gone like the wind. And to make matters worse, Bro ends up going to school the next day where his first class is rice cake smashing 101 and the topic for the day is how small is small and how large is large. Nevertheless, Min Chan learns something even more important in rice cake smashing 101 class and the lesson is the fact that Bro is what you would call a micro banana tree plantation. Now I have no idea why this anime dude took 23 whole years to figure out, but you know what? At least it's better late than never I guess. Anyways, after heading home and skipping the gaming cafe for the first time ever in his life, the first thing he does is search on Bing how to increase his weapon that he was born with. Unfortunately, after hours upon hours of hard research, he learns that he can only increase thickness like Korean corn dogs, but not the length, leaving him absolutely defeated. So now that Min Chan has no other option, things get dark real quick as he decides it's time to use his Valorant knife skins in real life. Luckily, our boy snaps back to his senses as he realizes that if he goes through with what he's thinking about right now, then all news stations would talk about him disappearing due to his micro-battering ram. So now that he doesn't even want to do the Logan Paul special in Japan, our boy just decides to sulk in misery as he slowly finds out there's somewhere deeper than rock bottom. However, as Bro weeps on the ground for his little rookie, a bright flash appears out of nowhere catching his attention. A game notification system then appears right in front of Min Chan, asking him if he would like to become the master of rice cake smashing, which would also give him the chance to grow his little rookie. Now to be clear, this system only appeared because as it turns out, Bro actually has the smallest behemoth in all of anime. So the anime gods gave his little battering ram a chance to be the destroyer of worlds, I mean papayas. 
Regardless, after the entire game system ordeal, we fast forward a week later where no one has seen Min Chan ever since his little behemoth got exposed to the world. With him missing, Xena eventually figured out that maybe her outburst has caused her childhood friend to do the unthinkable, which is causing a boy to sell all his game skins. As such, feeling guilty for what she may have done, she rushes out of her college class and storms off to see if her best friend is still kicking it on Minecraft. But before we continue the story, here's a quick preview for one of the targets that may or may not be absolutely destroyed by the King Behemoth himself. Anyways, enough with the preview, Xena arrives in front of our boy's apartment, anxiously ringing his doorbell hoping that her childhood friend will answer the door. After waiting a few minutes, no one answers, so Xena's anxiety levels skyrocket causing her to start banging on the door, yelling at Min Chan to open up. Eventually, and much to Xena's relief, Mr. Micro Behemoth opens the door, but this time he's looking a little bit like an anime menace. He then calmly asks Xena to come in, so she follows like a true friend even if bro looks like he's a totally different person as his eyes and half his face is being obscured. Usually when this happens, our editor knows it's time to go in editing overdrive mode as the sussy fire nation is about to rear its sussy head. But before I knew it, nothing sussy happened as things actually turned a little bit wholesome and Min Chan starting to cry, since the two started to make up for what happened. This causes me to double check if this was actually a wholesome anime instead, but it turns out on the very next panel that the sussy nation has already arrived. Things then escalate faster than Chinese escalators, as Bro whips out his banana tree plantation to show off, where it's revealed that Bro went from Min Chan to Max Chan. So now that Max Chan has entered the fray, Xena decides it's time for round two to explore his banana tree plantation, reminding us all to remember that size of battering rams always matter. And with just experiencing one single attack from Max Chan's siege, Xana's fully defended fortress ends up giving away with just a single move. The second plane, I mean battering ram, then hit causing Xena to lose her glasses again, which is something we all can agree to. So long story short, with the Minecraft towers falling, so did Xena as she never expected her childhood friend Min Chan to evolve into Max Chan in just a week. Now the real question is what the heck happened for this dude to go from rank last, all the way to rank 1 in just a matter of a week? Well, it turns out that ever since he accepted the game notification pop-up, he learned from his idol Jinwoo. But the only difference is that it's his behemoth gaining the power levels. It's then revealed that the real reason Bro was missing from his classes the past few weeks was because he was too busy finishing quests to make sure little Max Chan powered up. Now, one of the quests involved him having to spend the whole day watching Japanese cultured shows called anime, where he had to last the entire day without exploding the volcano. As such, slowly but surely, Min Chan watched as his Max Chan evolved after finishing every tutorial quest, making him vow to make sure that from now on, he will be forever the main protagonist. So basically, he's been grinding like a true gamer, as he wants to be the very best after hitting the low of lows. From being shorter than Xena's pinky, to now being as powerful as a battering ram capable of filling up an entire stomach with a single blow. Furthermore, Bro even gains some abilities as he continued leveling up, such as a skill that allows him to riz up anyone by just looking at them. So luckily for our boy, when Xena appeared earlier, a game notification appeared telling him to rice cake smash the heck out of his childhood friend. After successfully destroying Xena, our boy gains multiple levels at once as he cleared many sub-quests, including exploding the volcano deep within the chasms of his target. A meter also appeared on top of her head, causing our boy to be totally confused as he has no idea what it means. Nevertheless, after Xena leaves his apartment, it dawns on our boy that if his abilities really work, then imagine what he could do as a true menace if he goes to college and activates his skills. So now Max Chan has decided to go back to class, just so he could attempt conquering the world one by one, and one of the initial targets happens to be a teacher. Fast forward to the next day, our boy is being chilling in class, absolutely bored as he's busy waiting for one of his quests to pop up so he can pounce on the opportunity. Unfortunately, this isn't Wakanda forever, so Bro did not get a chance all morning to unveil his powers as not a single game notification appeared urging him to evolve. He even attempts to take the matters into his own hand by trying to activate his Riz skills, but his abilities refuse to work, causing people to start getting weirded out with his relentless stare. Eventually, a girl with red eyes and a tattoo of a butterfly appeared nearby, causing our boy's banana tree plantation to instantly activate rock hard. However, as his gaze locks on and lingers on the mysterious girl, Max Shan gets ganked and caught by Xena. Luckily, she lets bygones be bygones, so she decides to sit beside our boy, where she makes the correct decision to ditch her glasses. Eventually, class begins and comes Professor Mommy named Jiayan, where we can already feel our boy's gaze pierce through her armor. Now remembering that he has the powers to actually conquer his own professor, he slips into his daydreaming phase, busy thinking about how he's the one that can go ahead and evaluate her hard work. 
As such, he starts intently staring at the teacher, whilst also yelling in his own head for a quest to pop up that's related to the professor. Unfortunately, with class almost over, Max Chan begins to panic as not a single quest has popped up, and Bro looks like he's been begging to get quests related to the professor. Luckily for him though, as he freaks out, the professor actually makes eye contact with him as she asks him if he's okay. Now taking the opportunity of her attention, he activates his visual raise skill in an attempt to make the professor head over heels for him, but nothing happens. Our boy then face palms as he can't believe his ability didn't work, so it dawns on him that maybe his skills don't work unless he's on an active mission. As such, he decides to put his theory to the test, so he turns towards Xena, where he asks her to look at him real quick. After catching his childhood friend's gaze, he activates his Riz skill again to the best of his ability, totally hoping that it would work. Luckily for him though, he realizes it instantly works as Xena begins trembling harder than Jensen during Lee Finals. It works so well this time that her trembling can be seen a mile away, and she even pokes our boy and whispers to him that she's feeling absolutely weird in regards to her dragon plate skirt below. So now things start to get a little bit sus in the middle of class, where the mysterious red-eyed girl from before could see the entire thing play out in front of her. Regardless, Zena continues the onslaught of being the most sussy smash burger around in class with no care in the world. She then decides to shock the world, including Min Chan, by playing Call of Duty with the apples and papayas she was born with while class is still in session. Of course, our boy does nothing except fuel the bystander effect since now he knows that his brand new abilities actually work, but he still has to figure out the ins and outs of everything. Anyways, poor Zena, but let's just say now she's wearing the Chad pants in the relationship as she ends up taking Min Chan's hand and begs him to help her as she can't control the sussy overflow. With the damsel in dire distress, our hero takes up the mantle to save her, so he starts swishing in her basket like he's prime chef curry on the block. But this isn't enough though as the United States of America comes second in their World Cup group, so Zena urgently tells our hero that if he wants to save her from Bowser eating some peaches, then he needs to rice cake smash her as soon as possible. However, the turntables turn early in class today as Bro actually looks away and softly replies by saying it's not possible, causing the princess to be absolutely furious. Min Chan then reassures her that he's on the same page as her, and he really wants to explode Mount Min Chan deep within the chasms of the Valley of Xena, but at the end of the day, he's still the lever who leaves your ranked match when you needed them the most. However, it's revealed that the true reason our boy isn't pouncing at the opportunity right now even if he really wishes to do so, is because he has received a quest forcing him to stay. Upon further inspection, the quest notification states that Min Chan must stay in class till the end with Xena, and if he's successful in his mission, then he will be rewarded with a skill book. So if you think about it, Bro is actually galaxy brain as he really wants the quest reward and he already knows that Xena will endure till the end, so what's wrong with double dipping? Anyways, after looking at the quest alert once again, our boy finally turns back to Xena and makes an excuse, telling her that they both need to stay till the end of the lecture. Of course, Xena is absolutely stunned by Min Chan's response, but to add insult to the wound, Bro also tells her that he needs to stop being sussy with her right now because he thinks the girl behind them is onto them. So speak of the devil, our boy turns around to check on if the red-eyed beauty saw anything, but the mysterious girl quickly looks away to avoid eye contact in an attempt to ease suspicion, but we all know she was glued to the show as she loved keeping up with the Kardashians. After jump peeking behind him to make sure the sight is clear, he turns back to his best friend and straight up savagely tells her that she's the one in a hurry, so just pipe down and wait till the class is over, and he will continue their sussy nation attacks. With no other option other than being forced to wait, Xena agrees to stay till the end, but Bro is probably like good job kitten, be a good girl as he's jaded by his e-girl past life. And so time slowly passes where it feels like it's an eternity for not only Xena, but also to our boy, as he's still a mega sussy backa. Nonetheless, just as the teacher was about to end the class, she pauses for a moment and ganks the entire room by telling them she's decided to give them all a group assignment. As such, with Xena still in a hurry to make sure the rice cake smashing comes as soon as possible, she turns to the closest person hoping to quickly fill out their group slots. Luckily for our boy though, the closest one just happens to be a mysterious girl, and it looks like no one has asked her to join their group yet. As such, we finally discover that the red-eyed girl is a 20-year-old freshman who goes by the name Nabi, and she's pretty mysterious. Rumor has it that Nabi is probably a gangster due to her aura, and no one dares to approach her due to her appearance and all-black plus purple look. However, in reality, she's actually super nice and people are just being wimps due to her beauty. So now Min Chan actually has a chance in at least conversing with her. And so just like any other normal person, our bro starts yelling at Nabi to ask if she wants to join the group, due to her taking more than one second to respond. 
But as soon as Nabi quietly accepts the offer, Zena instantly stands up while dragging Min Chan to his feet, notifying him that she's literally at her limit. Shortly after confirming Nabi's reply, Zena transforms into Supergirl to carry Min Chan away, whilst also telling our boy that she really needs his blue eyes white dragon right this instant. Fast forward a few seconds later, the two end up failing to find a nice secluded area to play some Korean rice cake destroying, so Zena pushes Min Chan into another classroom. Upon entering the classroom, Bro actually gets bossed around again as Zena orders him to go against the wall by the door, but his brain power has already shut off due to his blue eyes white dragon slowly powering up into full power. And within a blink of the eye, our boy realizes that Zena has already summoned her trap card as Dark Magician Girl began to show his blue eyes white dragon who's boss. Now I'm doing everyone a favor for not moving this frame lower, as you might accidentally witness a white tree, regardless, Zena pauses for a moment and says to subscribe if you haven't already. After hitting the subscribe button, Min Chan starts telling her to chill out for a moment since he asks what's going to happen if they get caught in broad daylight. However, Girl Boss could not care less if someone decided to walk in right now into the classroom, as the only thing on her mind is how she's about to teach everyone some sussy jutsu. And with Zena looking like she's about to blast off into outer space, a warning notification appears alerting our boy that he needs to alleviate the pressure or else he's about to get actually attacked. Bro then looks on in fear, as he has no clue what he got himself into as he turned off his brain and let his behemoth think for him. But he's just hoping this isn't some alien versus predator type of ending. Anyways, with blood both rushing off to his head and down into the deepest depths of his behemoth, he tries his best to make sure he doesn't get attacked so our boy whips out his brand new signature move. Now let me tell you about this signature skill, and it's basically him just sending his battering ram straight through the fish colonies in front of him, causing weird splashing sounds to occur very loudly. But since school is still ongoing, multiple passerbys wonder if they are going crazy for hearing such weird splashing sounds. But our bro doesn't care as he's enjoying the fact that he's currently leveling up and gaining experience points from achievements. Nonetheless, bro ends up completing another mission as the splashing sounds transform into a puddle you could call the splashing point. Unfortunately, due to the shockwaves emanating from the splashing point, some fishing students decided to conduct their own independent investigation on what's happening inside. As such, some of the students actually end up opening the classroom containing both best friends, so the only thing Zinha and Min Cham can do is freeze like they live in Canada. Luckily for these two though, they have some mega plot armor as they avoid detection due to the students closing the door instead, as Faker showed up in the hallways and they rushed to get his autograph. Nevertheless, a brand new pop appears out of nowhere, notifying Min Chan that he has hit critically success and completed the quest named Blessed are those who endure it. And with the quest fully completed, our boy gains even more level ups, allowing him to get stronger and bigger in more ways than one. He also receives an additional reward on top of skill points, for doing such a good job at playing the game Rice Cake enjoying with Xena. Upon reading the additional prompt about the extra reward, Min Chan begins to jump for joy as he can't wait to see what his brand new reward could be, due to him loving gacha games. Unfortunately for us though, just as the reward was about to get revealed, Zina just had to interrupt Min Chan in the middle of celebrating and tells him it's time to leave, causing us to be left hanging. Now one thing to note about this entire ordeal is that if you look closely at the top, there was actually a school camera, so cue some eerie music as this does not bode well for our sussy Baker gang. Anyways, just as the two were leaving the lecture hall, our boy notices that the bar on top of Zina's head from the other day has appeared again but this time it seems more full than usual. But he decides to pay no more attention to it and shrugs it off as he decides to go home, wanting to nap as he's super tired from getting attacked by the Fire Nation. After laying down the rest for a bit, Min Chan begins to think that the real reason he's exhausted today is because it's been a long time since he attended university, and totally not because his behemoth activated the skill super rock hard all day. Regardless, Bro closes his eyes and tries to nap, but the only thing his brain could do is think about why his skill didn't work on the professor, but somehow it absolutely took over Xena, even though he replicated the same exact actions. Whatever, fast forward the next day, both Min Chan and Xena are back at it at school trying to be some good students. With the university campus cafe filled to the brim, Min Chan gets struck by some social anxiety, but he gets saved by Xena, who offers to go somewhere else. Shortly after, it's revealed that the two are trying to meet up with Nabi to do some schoolwork. After Xena sends a text to Nabi about their brand new meetup spot using her iPhone 69, our boy quickly jumps in to see if she replied, looking super eager to see if his crush is coming. Unfortunately, both Min Chan and Xena get ghosted by Nabi, as the ruthless butterfly didn't even show up to school that left her read receipts on. 
So our boy decides to go back home as he's already finished all his classes today and he doesn't want to be bored out of his mind actually studying. Min Chan then tries to nap for an hour so he could go play Escape from Tarka after, but bro pulls a me and turns his nap into an 8 hour snooze fest. With his afternoon and evening now wasted away, Min Chan picks up his phone to scroll through Reddit, but that he notices he got added to a group chat for their group project. After catching up on the group chat, it's revealed that Nabi is even more of a savage as she declines any roles assigned to her for the group project, leaving both best friends behind in her dust. But it's okay. These two are supposed to be Asian, and one Asian is enough to destroy a group project, so what do they even need Nabi for? Anyways, we fast forward to the next day back at school after their classes, where Zena and Min Chan decide to meet up to do some more schoolwork. However, these sussy monsters decided to choose the same exact lecture hall they tainted the other day to study and plan for their project that's coming up. Here, the turntables turn again as Zena begins to apologize profusely, while crying simultaneously, blaming herself for activating his planet Namek, and for also choosing the worst groupmate in Nabi. But since our boy has evolved into a Chad now, he successfully calms down Zena, and tells her to not apologize, claiming that sometimes urges just randomly happen and become unstoppable, just like my urge to blow up a toilet after hitting up Taco Bell. He then continues on and sweetly tells her that he enjoyed the entire ordeal, even if she was the one bombarding him with super sussy nation attacks. Nevertheless, the two sit in silence as both friends air their awkwardness out, busy giving Nabi another chance by waiting for her to maybe show up at their group meeting, but time is quickly fleeting. Eventually, bro gives up as he can't stop yawning anymore and it's time for him to eat Korean fried chicken, so he tells Zena it's time to pack up. However, as the two pack up their belongings and begin to leave the room, our boy stops abruptly in his tracks and realizes he screwed up big time. After catching the attention of Zena, Bro points directly towards the camera in the corner of the room, causing Min Chan to ask if she's ever noticed that camera before. With no reply coming from his best friend, both just stand there, looking as if both have seen a terrible ghost. 